Lance Sergeant Eric Richards pulled his Hetzer wheeled assault gun up into the Jägermech's shadow, draining the large bore autocannon onto it. Was it possible that he held the Chancellor of the Capellan Confederation under his weapon? One burst and all the recent slurs and threats were in memory, but common sense reined him in. This was only one possible vehicle, and anyway, Major Smithson wanted the Chancellor alive. Oh, Hetzer, what are we going to do with you? Let's just do this and see what happens. The history of the Hetzer is a reminder that not every military force in the inner sphere was well stocked with atlases, warhammers, patents, and other top tier military hardware. For many defense forces on planets under the control of the Great Houses, as well as planets in the periphery, you defend yourself with what you have and whatever else you can get on the cheap. Seeking to fill this very important niche, Quicksell Incorporated made it their mission to provide weapons that were inexpensive and functional. Mostly. First produced in 2887, the Hetzer Wheeled Assault Gun has the worst record this historian has ever seen. Styled and sold as an inexpensive option to bring powerful fire support to the battlefield, the reality is a little darker and borderline criminal. This, of course, does not let the procurement officers, committees, or bureaucrats off the hook for putting their own soldiery in harm's way in order to save a few hundred sea bills. Looking at the Hetzer and being a history guy, I cannot help but think back to reports from the old Soviet Union of trucks arriving in the field lacking gas tanks and tank designs containing autoloaders that had the curious quirk of accidentally loading crewman limbs into the breach due to lax engineering. Between the graft and the bureaucracy, which promoted lying rather than fixing problems, those problems were many and made much worse over time. When the T-80 main battle tank was designed, it was the Soviet Union's first tank that was propelled with a gas turbine engine. Hailed as a technological marvel, production was swift following its introduction in 1976. However, during the first Chechen war in the 1990s, the tanks were misused and serious flaws in the design were exposed in urban fighting. The turbine engine gobbled fuel like an officer drank vodka and even idling the vehicle would drain the gas tank quickly. Additionally, hits on the side of the vehicle by even modest rocket-propelled grenades had the tendency to penetrate the tank and cause an ammunition explosion. In retrospect, these shortcomings of the T-80 should have been identified long before Russian tank crews were exposed to enemy fire. These real-world shenanigans are the kind of things I think about anytime I hear the name Hetzer and the company that produced it. The four-wheeled vehicle that rolled off the quick cell production lines on Indicas, Alshane, and Kaladasa was technically a weapon of war, but that comes with some serious business asterisks. It weighed in at 40 tons, was powered by a 140 set-aside internal combustion engine. With a top speed of just 64.8 km per hour and on wheels, the Hetzer was severely limited in comparison to most other vehicles and battle mechs that it might encounter in the field. In what is going to be a running theme in the discussion of the Hetzer, it was decided that it was cheaper to put on wheels than create a tracked unit. Therefore, they went with the wheels. When deployed, reports included very descriptive language concerning the need to cut paths through most forests and level steep inclines to make it possible for the Hetzer to advance in all but the most gentle of environments. I'm going to go ahead and quote the following description for the Hetzer's construction process for two reasons. One, I cannot describe it any better, and two, if I don't, people will claim I made it up. So here we go. Using a basic truck chassis and engine, Quicksell welds armor plate into a box shape, cuts out holes for hatches and weapons, and places enough equipment inside to allow the vehicle to be marginally effective on the battlefield. The simplicity of the procedures also allows Quicksell to employ unskilled labor, which definitely improves the firm's profit margins. The original Hetzer had six tons of armor distributed across its hull with a typical higher concentration on the front of the vehicle. The singular weapon, a Crusher SHAC-20 autocannon, offered a high damage possibility, though at short range. It also had to be pointed out that the autocannon was mounted into the body of the vehicle, as there is no turret. Combined with the Hetzer's low speed, often the best strategy for the vehicle was to find a place to hunker down and hide, waiting for the larger enemy unit to drive or walk by. Offering high damage at low cost, the Hetzer saw brisk sales. Unfortunately, as soon as those first units arrived in the hands of customers, the negative reports and complaints started to trickle in. Some customers complained that when the Hetzer arrived, key components were either missing entirely or seemingly were just tossed into the vehicle without being installed. These temporarily incomplete Hetzers 
ended up in motor pools needing repairs immediately, which revealed the hidden costs associated with so many of Quicksell's products. It's just another reminder that in so many ways, you get what you pay for. At least it has a narrow, low profile, so that's, that's something, I guess. Additional issues were exposed with deployment, including an electrical system that relied upon a battery that was insufficient for standard use. It forced the Hetzer's crew to keep the vehicle's engine running at all times in order to prevent the battery from being drained. As a result, this made the machine much more vulnerable in situations where they needed to be hiding. A running engine exposed more than a few positions to enemy fire. To add permanent injury to insult, Hetzer crews complained that the crew compartment was too small and the exits too cramped to facilitate a quick escape. Many Hetzer crews died trying to escape what was deemed the rolling coffin after even modest armor penetration led to a compartment fire that could not be escaped. It shouldn't be surprising that the Capellan Confederation was keenly interested in the Hetzer even after its reputation as a death trap was well known. As a result, one of the few positive after-action reports came from a Capellan commander of a Hetzer battalion, which happened to be putting its crews through a live-fire drill. A Free Worlds League company carrying out Raycon on the planet ended up stumbling into the drill. Apparently, the Hetzer battalion performed well against the Merrick Max and pulled off a victory. I know, I'm shocked too. It's been reported that the Hetzer was purchased by the Capellans specifically for use in what are called redemption detachments. The men and women who made up these detachments were tasked with taking on the dangerous job of crewing the Hetzer to make up for some shortcoming or criminal act. There was value in taking largely expendable people, putting them in largely inexpensive machines in order to risk it all for that one perfect shot on an expensive battle mech or mainline battle tank. However, the Hetzer's story is not all grimdark. During the Battle of Helm in the midst of Operation Hammerfall, Hetzers were used effectively by the Silverhawks' Free World Leaguers to blunt the assault by Alaric Ward and Duke Vedette Brewer. Playing to the Hetzers' strengths, the Silverhawks dragged the attackers into an urban fighting situation where ambushes and traps were set out across the city. One Hetzers' crew was successful in taking down two Clan Wolf battle mechs, killing both mech warriors in the process. Surviving the battle but being captured, Alaric Ward was so angry he executed the vehicle's crew. In one of the more bizarre attempts to make the Hetzer more viable, or just a way to sell more heat sinks and medium lasers, a laser version of the Hetzer was created in 2889. It pulled the AC-20, added a ton of additional armor, and added four standard medium lasers. While this ammo-free variant did technically put out the same damage as the AC-20, the damage would be distributed through four separate laser shots. I'm okay with it, but I can definitely understand the complaints that this guts the value of the machine that could otherwise blow off an assault mech's head on a lucky shot. In 2893, there was an attempt to create a more balanced Hetzer, which involved pulling the AC-20 and downgrading it to an AC-10 autocannon. It also carried an additional ton of armor, improving the survivability of the vehicle slightly. The five tons of ammunition could keep it in the fight longer, though I would be very impressed by a Hetzer that survived long enough to fire 50 times. The range boost for the AC-10 also has to be factored into the tank's utility as it doesn't have to get quite as close to put fire on target. Overall, I like the AC-10 variant of the Hetzer, but I was never really a fan of the AC-20 anyway. Similar to the previous attempt with medium lasers, the SRM Hetzer variant pulled the AC-20 in favor of six SRM-6s and three tons of ammunition. The six tons of armor remained unchanged. This vastly improved the one-shot possible damage to 60, but at the cost of significant scattering of said damage over the target. This is an interesting variant as it's basically a poor man's SRM carrier. A standard SRM carrier is 1.9 million C-bills, and the SRM Hetzer is just 833,000. So this one is worth pondering. In 3001, the LRM version of the Hetzer was first spotted on the battlefield. Yet again, that AC-20 is pulled in favor of a collection of smaller weapons. In this case, a pair of LRM-15s along with four tons of ammunition. The original six tons of armor went untouched. This is another one worth pondering, as I can't think of a less expensive way to get a couple of LRM-15s into the battlefield for some fire support. For 820,000 C-bills, you could do a lot worse. At least with the LRMs, most of the time the thin armor isn't a huge immediate issue. A scout version of the Hetzer was spotted in 3014, which added a half ton of armor and an active probe in exchange for two tons of the AC-20 ammunition. If you were running a force of similar units and needed an active probe, the Hetzer might not be a bad option. 
Do Hetzers usually live long enough to fire more than 10 times anyway? The LBX version of the Hetzer would arrive in 3063, and it would be the first substantive upgrade to any of the vehicle's systems. Quicksell wasn't going to waste any money on R&D or upgrading this thing, that's for sure. The biggest change was the swap out of the ICE with a fusion engine. This opened up enough mass in the vehicle to go up to 7.5 tons of armor and allow for the upgrade to an LB-20X autocannon along with 5 tons of ammunition. Even at the significantly higher cost of 1.48 million Seabills, the Capellan Confederation Armed Forces went for it. Reports suggest that once a Predator tank destroyer was introduced, the LBX Hetzer was gradually retired from service. The Hetzer train goes completely off the rails with the word of Blake kerfuffle variant introduced in 3076. It was powered by a fusion engine and received special environmental sealing to protect the crew inside from things that are outside that are dangerous. Yeah. 6.5 tons of heavy ferrofibrous armor provided a decent 32 points of protection on each side of the vehicle. The traditional AC-20 autocannon was pulled to install a rotary AC-5 autocannon along with 60 rounds of ammunition and case. There was even enough mass left over for an improved C-3 computer to make those shots count. The sealed Hetzer could be an interesting option for your Battletech TRPG adventures where you need a unique vehicle that can handle a rough environment. Its utility might ultimately boil down to how you feel about that rotary autocannon. Now before we cover the two most recent variants, we do have to take a small detour to talk about the Jagged Panzer II, which was a kerfuffle era refit of the Hetzer, which really went all in on the tech upgrades. Frontier Tech created this very expensive design and offered it as part of what they described as an adventure package. Seeking to rectify some of the major flaws in the Hetzer, the company added an XL fusion engine to push the movement profile of the vehicle up to 580 from the original 4.6. To improve the vehicle's notoriously short lifespan, the Hetzer variant was given six tons of stealth armor and a Guardian ECM installed into the body. The AC-20 was upgraded to an Ultra AC-20 along with four tons of ammunition. Finally, two machine guns were installed into the left and right sides of the vehicle on spawns and turrets, providing this Hetzer with its first anti-infantry protection. Overall, this Hetzer is stronger than any previous iteration, however the cost it created is astounding. When I built it in Megamech, it came out to be 3.66 million C-bills, which is a lot. You could get a kitted out light mech or even a decent medium like a hunchback for the same price. In the end, you're paying 4.4 times as much as the original Hetzer to double the firepower and slightly improve its speed. I think if someone was in the market for a Hetzer, the Jagged Panzer II defeats the original purpose of providing an inexpensive solution for a high power weapon system. In 3090, Quicksell finally got around to updating their original design with some newer tech. The variant known as the Hetzer Cell was the result. The biggest non-weapon improvements for this variant was the shift to fuel cell tech. This addressed the long-standing power issues and freed up a ton and a half of mass for use elsewhere. It also improved the movement profile of the vehicle up to 5'8". The 6.5 tons of armor provided the usual fair to middling protection, but the star of the show was the upgraded Ultra AC-20 autocannon. Fed by four tons of ammunition, the Cell Heltzer can put out an impressive volume of fire and take down even the heaviest of battle mechs if it can get close enough and hit a sensitive area. It's a shame that it took so long, but the Cell Hetzer is as good as the machine can get without abandoning the AC-20. To quote the meme, you may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Our last official variant of the Hetzer is actually from Clan Wolf, who apparently thought it was worthy of a Clan Tech upgrade. The Hetzer C retains the original 140 internal combustion engine, but upgrades the armor to 6.5 tons of ferrofibrous, which offers 115 points of protection. What draws most attention to the Hetzer C is the Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle 30, which is the vehicle's only weapon. Being able to hit out to 24 hexes for 30 damage is appealing and the weapon can be devastating to infantry vehicles and moderately armored battle mechs. The downsides include a lack of concentrated damage and the two hex minimum range, which can leave the Hetzer C's crew entirely defenseless if the enemy can get close. The Hetzer C is a bit wild, but not as expensive as I would have predicted at just 1.12 million C bills. For an entirely non canon and not trying to be Mechfrog variant, 
the Hetzer MF fields one of the few weapons not already represented by the previous attempts to turn the Hetzer into something more useful. For this refit, a fuel cell replaces the ICE and carries 6.5 tons of ferrofibrous armor to slightly increase the vehicle's durability. The AC-20 was removed in favor of a standard Gauss rifle, along with two tons of ammunition. This gives the MF variant three quarters of the punch of the original, but at a much increased range. For close range squabbles, a pair of ER small lasers were installed into the left and right sides of the chassis. Overall, I think the Hetzer MF offers something the other variants don't while not straying too far from the theme of the original. Now, if only we could do something about the fact that they keep arriving from the quick cell factory with armor panels that are held on with duct tape. If you want to give the Hetzer MF a try on the tabletop, I've added the record sheet for it in the video notes below. Those stories of Hetzers taking down Atlases and Timberwolves persist. Those are really the exceptions that prove the rule for a vehicle that lives on the extreme of the armor speed power opportunity cost table. In spite of some attempts to improve it with other weaponry, it struggles both in the lore and in the tabletop. If you love it, keep loving it. If you hate it, remember it's just a game with plastic toys. Do you have a Hetzer story? It seems to have a pretty devoted fan base from what I've seen over the last few days, and it's one of those units that would be a meme if the community wasn't singularly hyper-focused on the urban mech. But I'm still getting angry messages over that video, so let's just move on. Thank you as always for coming by to talk some Battletech. If you felt the video was worthy, don't forget to hit that like button and even consider subscribing to the channel so you're more likely to see future Battletech videos from yours truly. Taking that extra step to become a channel member directly funds the videos and improves the production value over time. With that, I'll say goodbye for now. Take care, have an amazing week, and please go out and make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.